will be the swearing in of uh, a new co town councillor and the swearing in of the school board members. Town clerk, please. Jennifer and Maria. My hearty congratulations to everybody. May I have the roll call, please? Chairman Carson? Here. Councillor Barry? Here. Councillor Fritz? Here. Councillor McGinty? Here. Councillor Lynch? Here. Councillor Roberts? Present. Councillor Ann Swift Kayata? Here. Thank you. The Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> well, for our audience in council chambers and for our, hopefully our audience at home, we do have a little unusual uh, evening here this morning for the first few minutes. I, um, I'm not going to, I'm going to try not to read this information, but for people so that you could listen. This is the centennial of the Cape Elizabeth Town Hall, which is an historic building in the town of Cape Elizabeth. This is the 100 years. It was built in June, on June 19th. Um, <clears throat> in 1895, Cape Elizabeth separated from South Portland, and that was the, at the time that they felt that there'd be a need to have a municipal building to house the town offices. There was a little discussion, some a great deal of controversy, and some arguments, but eventually uh, it was agreed that it would be built. The Frederick Thompson, an architect from Portland, for this plan, designed the entire building for the $90 sum for his architectural plans, a fee that we're not likely to see again, I'm sure. The land itself for this building was acquired from the Robinson family. Uh, and this is I interesting since we have, over the years, the Robinson family has given other parcels of land for the benefit of the citizens of Cape Elizabeth. The dedication ceremony was, uh, began with a prayer and by the music from the Bowery Beach Orchestra. The information for this event, the centennial event, came from a handwritten diary written by Elizabeth Murray. Uh, and this is how, the inform that's how we, where this information came from. General Cruft offered a bell to be used in the town hall. That bell still exists in Cape Elizabeth and now is hanging in the Spurwink Church. The town hall was greatly expanded in 1948 to add the two wings that are here and also for the council chambers. And there have been several other times when the building has been renovated. But for those who, who maybe are new to this town, if you try to re think of what this hall looks like, 
This was actually my kindergarten class uh, in this council chambers when it was built. And on the upper floors, which are now offices, I had seventh and eighth grade. That was the full junior high school. We had two seventh grades and two eighth grades. That was the full size of the junior high school. The other thing, which is very hard for people to understand, is the, in the basement of the church was the fire station. So when there was a fire call, and the bells would go off, the, the garage doors would go up from over here in this corner, and everybody would run to the front of the building so we could watch the fire truck drive out. But it is hard to believe that, as you know the building now, that there were fire trucks down in the basement, and that this also was used as classroom space. So, in honor of that, one of the things that we also learned from the diary are that, that three songs were played by the Bowery Beach Orchestra. And our very own entertainer this evening, Councillor Barry, who is a well-known pianist and accompanist uh, in Greater Portland in Southern Maine, has agreed to bring in his portable, what is it, piano, what do you call it? Uh, to play exactly the same three songs for our viewing audience that were played on the centennial. And this is the centennial celebration. The three songs that were played by the Bowery Beach Orchestra were America, Yankee Doodle, and the Star Spangled Banner. I now bring you <laughs> Councillor Barry. You all have to sing. <laughs> And for those who didn't see the beginning of this, if they click it on during the week to watch the council meeting, they're going to wonder about this. <laughs> oh, I, we want to sing? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> like everybody, Councillor Barry, we all wish that we could sit at a piano and just play music like that by ear. Anyway, those are the three songs. That was the beginning of this town hall building, and this is the centennial year. Making allowances for rheumatoid arthritis, for which yes. is most grateful. Yes, well, you're still doing it very well. <laughs> so, thank you very much, Councillor Barry. Uh, reports and correspondence. Uh, Councillor Roberts. I just have one item I'd like to bring up. Uh, I know over the past year around town, as I've been you know, at the IGA or, at, or down at Jonesy's or wherever you might be, people have been commenting about the four houses that have gone up on Ocean, on Ocean Street <laughs> uh -oh. or Ocean House Road, whichever it might be at that point. 
And then uh, trying to give you a difficult time. Why is the town letting them build these houses there? Well, I'd like to thank Mr. Malley. He finally has the, the sign up that indicates that those houses were built in South Portland. So thank you, Bob. <laughs> That is true. I told him that I wanted to put a sign up there that says leaving Cape Elizabeth just before you get to those four houses, <laughs> since we don't build in the wetlands. <laughs> yes, Councillor swift Kayata. Madam Chair, I just want to um, recognize that yesterday was the high school graduation in Cape Elizabeth. I want to congratulate everyone who graduated. And I also want to um, thank everyone who participated both in the town um, employee organization and the school employee organization. They did a wonderful, wonderful job to make it a great day for the students and the parents, of which I was one. And um, I also want to bid a uh, heartfelt, um, give heartfelt gratitude and a fond farewell to Pete Dawson, who is the um, outgoing uh, high school principal who will be moving to Tel Aviv, Israel, to head up an American school, high school there. Um, and I also, last but not least, want to thank all the parents who worked so hard on project graduation, which took place last night from 7 p.m. until 6.30 this morning when my daughter trailed in, extremely tired, but very happy, having had a wonderful chem-free evening with her whole class, and it took a, a ton of work by all the parents and the faculty, and I just want to thank everybody. It was a great day and a great evening for Cape Elizabeth. Thank you, and our congratulations to you. I understand you're not only did your daughter graduate, she's in the top three, four, or 10 percent of the class. She, she did very well, and we're very proud of her. Oh, that's terrific. Um, any other reports of correspondence? Councilor McGinty? Um, I'd just like to acknowledge uh, Jim Murray again for um, the Memorial Day Parade. He, he chairs that every year. That was a great job, and again, we had a, a good turnout again I this think year. The turnout for that parade was bigger than ever, and more veterans marched this year yeah. than I've ever seen. Yeah, it's great. Kind of great. So I'd just like to recognize him. And once again, thank everybody who supported my election and, and voted me back in the office. I'll continue to try to do a good job for the town of Cape Elizabeth. Did you? Yes, um, I just wanted to mentioned that I had the pleasure of uh, awarding a thousand dollar scholarship um, that w went to the winner of a um, regional waste system essay contest to a high school senior um, in the area. It was not to Cape Elizabeth, um, it was to a student in Freeport, but um, I'd like to see some students next year keep that in mind to, to apply to regional waste system from Cape Elizabeth. Thank you. No further reports? Town Manager's report, please. Yes, uh, thank you, Madam Chairman. Just wanted to mention, I wasn't here last week, and uh, John alluded to Memorial Day, and I, I just want to join in thanking Jimmy Murray, but also want to thank uh, all of the, the different members of the town uh, staff who were involved in helping to plan for Memorial Day, particularly uh, the Department of Public Works, who got Riverside Cemetery, all spiffed up and looking quite good. Uh, for the day, Deborah uh, Lane does an awful lot for the day, uh, and you know there's so much. Many of our parks that the goal is always to get them ready for by Memorial Day, and it was a particular challenge this year. I appreciate their efforts. It was also terrific at the parade, just to see so many folks there. And I think the way Jimmy recognized the the veterans who were there was particularly meaningful. I've always thought the Memorial Day parade in recent years has been a, an event where there's a lot of kids in the parade and. Uh, the parents come to the parade, but when he asked the veterans to raise their hands, it was just uh, absolutely amazing to see the numbers of hands that went up in the audience. And, and as part of that generation uh, who never served, the, the post-Vietnam generation, uh, it gave me an even greater appreciation uh, for it that day, and seeing so many there. So thank you. That's it. Okay. Uh, are there any um, citizens' discussion of items that are not on the agenda? Hearing none, we'll move to the next item. Madam Chairman. Oh, yes, I Councilor Perry. I would like Barry. to make a motion that the uh, minutes of the meeting of May 14th <laughs> and the special meeting of June 4th be approved as uh, read and particularly commend uh, Deborah Lane, the town clerk, for keeping track of all the people who spoke at the public hearing on June 4th. I thought that was uh, uh, tough to keep track of. I think she did an excellent job and should be commended for that. With that motion, I move that the... Uh, that the minutes of those two meetings be approved. Henry, you have to wait for me to announce the next agenda item before you make the motion. No, not going to do it. <laughs> All right. Second. It's been moved and seconded. 
It hasn't been, hasn't been seconded. <laughs> Somebody's going to second. <laughs> we move to second that we accept the minutes of the uh, May 14th meeting and the June 4th meeting. Any further discussion? I All those in favor? I have attention deficit disorder. <laughs> Item number one, the election of a town council chairman for the year 2001 and 2002. Uh, I would just like to tell, tell people that the council does meet uh, one time for a, for a town council caucus, where we list out all the uh, committees and jobs there are to do in the course of one year where councillors must serve. And so the councillors can have a choice to choose the, the committees that they feel comfortable with or that they want to learn about if they, in, our, in an area that they want to serve the town. So we have had that caucus, and we have uh, made no votes, but that we have decided by consensus which, which councillors will serve on which committees. So um, we are now talking about the chairman of the town council will be this next uh, first item that we're going to vote on. But I'd like to take one minute to, to talk to the citizens to say that I've served for, in this particular term as my, on, on the town council, where I had served in, uh, well into the 80s, or all through the 80s, but I thoroughly enjoyed this. I really only had one goal when I took this, the chairmanship for this particular time, and that is to try and, um, try and work with a really good group of people on the town council and to validate everybody's opinion, to make sure that everybody felt comfortable, that they had something of value to say, and that we as councilors all listened to what they had to say. We appreciated it, whether we agreed or we disagreed. Uh, with, with a particular person, but at least that we listened and that we respected their opinion. And I think that that has been accomplished. I think one of the things I've heard is that, um, that people have said, gee, what a nice town council. It really seems to work together. It seems to get a lot done. And I really felt that that was a goal that I had, and, and I think it's been accomplished. I want everyone to know how much I've enjoyed it. I will miss my, my house is on, on that end of town, and I drive by town hall. So every time I drive by town hall in the morning, I get to see that the manager's car is there. And first thing in the morning, he gets a phone call from me saying, what's happening? What's happening? Is there anything going on I should know about? So I will miss that, although he says he can do it. But one, of us, one making the phone call is probably enough. <laughs> Doesn't need another. But at any rate, we will now move on to item number one, which is election of a town council chairman for the year 2001 to 2002. And I'll entertain a motion. Madam Chairwoman. Councilor would, Roberts. I would like to move that the council uh, Vote for uh, Ann Swift Kayata as the council chair for the year 2001 2002. I'll second it. It's been moved and seconded that Councillor Swift Kayata act as the town council chair for the year 2001 2002. Is there any more discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Opposed, none. <laughs> Thank you very much. We'll have the switching of seats here. Hold, hold it right there just for a moment, please. Um, I want to thank my fellow councillors for the confidence you've shown in me in uh, electing me your chair. It's truly been an honor to serve our town, and I look forward to trying to do my best in the coming year to do a good job for Cape Elizabeth. But on a more personal note, I want to take a couple minutes to uh, thank our outgoing chairwoman, Penny Carson, who has served with distinction during her many years on the council and her last two as our chair. Penny's been a wonderful leader and leaves very big shoes to fill, and, but I'll do my best with, with her wise counsel. So I, I have some resume stuff to go over here, Penny. It's pretty impressive. I was reading this saying, geez, this is pretty Good. cool. Probably more than I have written down. Well, you pay attention. Maybe you learned something here. <laughs> Penny Carson. She's been our chairman um, in 1982 and 1983. Back 20, almost 20 years ago, and then she was elected chairman two years ago in 1999 and re-elected chairman in the year 2000. She is the first council chairman to be re-elected as council chair since 1972-73. Hmm. And as experience has shown since that point, it's extremely rare for a council member to be asked to serve as council chair for a second year, so that's a, a credit to you, Penny. You've been an exceptional leader for us, and I, I mean that truly. You've created a spirit of teamwork for the council, within the council. You've, as you just noted, you've tried to listen to everybody's viewpoint, both on the council and from everybody else in town, wishing, and even without the town, um, trying to offer us opinions. During your tenure, a lot of things have happened. Uh, the council has approved funding for the new pool, the new public works garage, the new town center fire station, 
the new police station, the purchase of the Pond Cove Millwork Building, a plan to help the land trust with the acquisition of the Robinson uh, parcel, and last week the restoration of some certain building rights. What has been really amazing is that each of the votes on those projects and issues was unanimous, and that has been a credit, again, a credit to you and your leadership. The council has also protected the town farm property off of Spurwink Avenue. We've built ball fields at Gullcrest. We've opened and expanded Riverside Cemetery. We've developed new zoning for tower locations. We've implemented enhanced 911 service and a new strategic plan for the rescue services. And again, after much discussion and review, all were approved nearly unanimously over the past two years under your leadership. We've prepared for and came through Y2K. Our web page was enhanced and the town be has become more interactive all the time. The municipal government has continued a good relationship with the school board and the school department. The town's bond rating has improved and Penny has even traveled to Augusta to look out after the interest of dogs at our state park. So this is a woman who's done it all and done it all well. So it's been a tremendous two years thanks to your focus on the community and your steady efforts to make Cape Elizabeth one of the most livable communities in Maine. You've done so much for the town from your first election to the council in 1979 through your service until 1988 and then since your re-election as a council member in 1998. Thank you for your leadership and thank you for all the talents you've devoted to your native home community. On behalf of a grateful town council, I wish to present you with this plaque and these flowers for all that you've done. Thank you very much. Black, Black says, presented as a lasting symbol of our appreciation of your most valuable contributions to the town of Cape Elizabeth. Penelope Carson. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. And I certainly have enjoyed it. The council is in good hands. Yes. It's a good thing that we did. We did vote. It was unanimous. <laughs> After all that, it sounds like there's not much left to do. There's always more to do, John. Can we go home now? A penny's done a lot. I do wish to say that this is my 1979 seat, which I insisted on having because this was the seat in 1979 when I followed Billy Jordan. This was his seat. Re returning to your home. So That's right. Okay, item number two, adoption of the town council rules. The rules were in your packet, and I don't think there have been any change changes since... The last time these were voted on, have there, Mr. Manager? No. So do I hear a motion, John? Um, I move the acceptance of the rules of the Cape Elizabeth Town Council as presented. I second it. And moved and seconded. Any discussion? Nope. Okay. Shall we vote? All those in favor? Against? I think it's 7-0. That's it. Approved. Okay, item number three. Um, items number three through ten all have to do with uh, our representation on different committees within the town council and um, our, also our representation to various committees not within the council but our representation on committees outside of the council. Would it be all right with everyone if we take them as a block? Sure. Just to vote on that? No. Okay. So I'll, I can read through them all if, the, if that's okay. We're, we're voting on appointment of the Finance Committee with Jack Roberts as chairman and the council as a whole to serve as the Finance Committee. Appointment of the Ordinance Committee of Carol Fritz, Marianne Lynch, and John McGinty. And I'm, I'm, would like to note that that committee will have to hold an initial meeting to set the chair. Um, so that uh, town staff knows who to address certain matters to. Uh, appointment of the Appointments Committee of Henry Berry, Penelope Carson, and Jack Roberts, 
And again, that committee will need to hold an initial meeting to set their chairman uh, for the benefit of staff and anyone else who needs to communicate with that community. Election of a representative to the Maine Municipal Association Legislative Policy Committee, and that would be Mary Ann Lynch. Appointment of a representative and alternate to Regional Waste Systems Incorporated Board of Directors, that would be Carol Fritz as representative and Henry Berry as the alternate. Appointment of a representative to the Greater Portland Council of Governments Executive Committee, that would be Mary Ann Lynch and also for the Greater Portland Council of Governments General Assembly, a representative, John McGinty, and an alternate, John Roberts, Jr. And then appointment of a representative to PACS, to the PACS Policy Committee, and that would be Michael McGovern, our town manager. Do I hear a motion? Councilor Fitz. Um, may I just note that I think one is missing. Um, uh -huh. Was the alternate to the MMA Legislative Policy Committee? Which was myself. That's what I happen to know. <laughs> then, I, I, hmm. unless I hear objection, I think we can add that to the list. So, with that addition, does anyone want to make a motion? Madam Chairman, I'd like to move that uh, items uh, three through ten on the uh, agenda uh, with the amendment of adding uh, Councilman uh, Fritz. Uh, be uh, amended, uh, be uh, adopted, excuse me, that, that the uh, 3 through 10 be adopted. Second. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? No discussion? Let's move the question. All those in favor? Against? 7 0 approved. Okay, item number 11. Um, public comment and action upon the renewal of the malt, spiritus, and vin vinus? vinus liquor license for the Good Table Incorporated at 527 Ocean House Road. Do you have anything, Mr. Manager, to say? Yeah, the town clerk has processed this application. I know has reviewed it with our public safety individuals, and uh, it is no objection been uh, registered uh, for the renewal of this license, these licenses, excuse me. I'd move for passage. Second. The, the applicant is present. Is there any discussion? What, uh, is there I'd any like public to ask comment? you, what, what, what are the requirements here? Do they have to review uh, tax returns or uh, uh, inventory or uh, in, any details of the business or just public safety? I'll turn that question to the manager. Right. Th this truly is, you know, it really set up for a situation like the old port. Uh, which, which we don't have here, or, or a place where you have restaurants that uh, because it's felt because of some of these types of activities may be a little too boisterous uh, and cause some excitement in the neighborhood. Uh, that, that is why you have this, and that's generally what you, what you might look at. And in this instance, uh, while I'm sure there's some boisterous good times there, they're, they're not so boisterous that they interfere with the general enjoyment of the neighborhood well, by I, others. I live in that neighborhood, and it's never been boisterous. <laughs> Any other questions or discussion? Did we move it? it was, moved. was there a motion? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. and it was seconded. Okay. All in favor? Against? The ayes have it. Seven zero. Um, item number twelve: receipt of the draft Cape Elizabeth Greenbelt plan and the proposed referral to a council workshop. Do you want to? Dan Chase, the chairman, is here. Good evening. I am Dan Chase. I'm the current chair of the Conservation Commission. On behalf of the commission, just wanted to say that uh, we're pleased to submit this draft of a updated Greenbelt plan to you and uh, for your review. <clears throat> and we look forward to meeting with you in workshop session to further refine this and get it to the point where a new Greenbelt plan could be adopted. Thank you. I, just, I want to thank you on behalf of the Council. It's an impressive document, and I can see that you and the rest of the Commission have done a lot of work on it. So thank you very much. 
Uh, uh, Jim, and I'd like to make a motion that uh, the council accept uh, with thanks uh, the uh, report of the uh, uh, committee and that it be referred to a workshop. Second. Discussion. It's been moved hmm. and seconded. Any discussion? I'd just like to comment that I went to the public hearing that, that the uh, Conservation Commission had, and it was very well attended, very good comments, and, and it was a very good report. I would concur. All those in favor of uh, the motion to accept this report and then refer it to a workshop? Against? None? It's unanimous. Um, I, I presume we will just get together with our calendars at the end of the meeting and try to set a date for the workshop. All right, item 13, receipt and possible action on a revised report of the Playground Study Committee. We received a, re a revised report included in the Town Council packet. Is there anyone here from the, uh, yes. I'd like to just comment very briefly okay. to say ahead, the playground committee, one of the representatives asked me the other, e the other day of what time did they need to be here. I said, oh, you'd be safe if you arrived by 8 o'clock. So I'd like to commend the town council for <laughs> <laughs> delaying the meeting until 8. Mike's right on schedule as usual. Um, my name is Tina Harnden, um, and I am a member of the playground committee. Our chair, Lisa Silverman Gent, could not be with us this evening, unfortunately, so I am here in her stead. Um, just quickly for um, council members, for people who um, have not um, been apprised of what the Playground Committee is and what we've been up to for the last 15 months, we are a committee of 11 um, people representing various sectors of the town, school, parents. We've been meeting since February of 2000 to draft solutions to renovate our rapidly disintegrating school playgrounds and hopefully build a new playground at Fort Williams for our non-school aids population. We presented a draft of our findings to town council at two workshops in May and we've come before you to tonight to present what we hope will be our final report, um, which you should have received a copy of sometime late last week. So I hope you've had a chance to look that over. I will not go through all the details of that, but um, again, just for the um, audience and members who don't have that in their hands and hopefully to answer some of your questions. I just want to raise a few points quickly. Since we last came before you at our May 14th workshop with you, um, quite a few things have occurred that I think are of note and worth mentioning. We met with the planning board on June 5th at a workshop. They were very supportive of our project. We presented all three plans to them very briefly. Um, they concurred with Code Enforcement Officer Bruce Smith and Town Planner Marina Mara that the renovations to Pond Cove and Middle School do not require site review. The um, proposed new playground at Fort Williams will possibly, most probably, require um, a zone change to accommodate for its location. We've discussed this um, with the council before. And we agreed with the planning board that we would come back at that time when we're ready to move on to the Fort Williams playground um, to bring our plans in and go through the, the process as necessary. Um, so they sent us off with our blessing and um, a request to come back with some final plans to review with them um, as need be. So we do not need site review there. Um, if you recall, at um, our last workshop, we had all come to the conclusion, correct me if I'm wrong, that we needed to spend the $150,000 that would f what was funded through a bond by the end of fiscal year 2002. And we determined that we would not have enough additional funds available by that time to embark on all three playgrounds, the renovation of the Pond Cove playground, the renovation of the middle school playground, and the new playground at Fort Williams. So we have focused for the immediate future on the two school playgrounds, and we are proposing to split the $150,000 bond money between those two playgrounds. Fort Williams very much needs to be done, and we will focus on that for the future. But we felt it was imperative that we got moving on the school playgrounds immediately, since they are in um, quite serious disrepair. Um, you will also probably recall that we were um, very anxious to get going on some renovations this coming summer. Um, I think the council was wise in advising us that that was probably a bit of a t tight time frame and it has become only tighter as time has gone on. And with our funding needs as such as they are as well, we have um, come to the conclusion that we are not going to be able to begin renovation of the school playgrounds until the summer of 2002. 
So that is our plan so far, and that is what we have presented to you in the new report. Um, in addition, we have had an opportunity to walk the school sites with a grant administrator from the State Office of Land and Water Conservation Funds to determine the feasibility of our application for a possible grant totaling a maximum of $25,000. We're in the process of applying for that now. Grant deadline for that is June 30th, and we should hear on that by the end of October of this year as well. If we were, if we were able to secure the $25,000 for that grant, it would be fabulous. We need it. And most likely, we have been advised by the grant administrator that money would be available for the middle school playground, but not the Pond Cove playground. Um, one of the tenets of this grant is that it cannot be a playground that is exclusively for the use of school children. It must be available to the public as well. And they felt in reviewing the Pond Cove playground, it was pretty much, because of its location, exclusively a school use playground. So that is where we stand on that. Um, a representative from our town in Shore also toured the playgrounds, as a matter of fact, that same day to determine how severe our safety issues were. I was not there, and I'm going to let uh, Mike McGovern or perhaps Ernie McVeigh, if he's able to come in later, speak to the conclusions um, of that walkthrough. We also were able to meet with Tom LaProd from the town library trustees to discuss our proposal for the outdoor classroom section of the Pond Grove playground, which um, takes advantage of the existing garden space behind the children's room of the library, which abuts the Pond Cove Playground. Um, Tom was very supportive of our program. Um, he couldn't speak for the entire Board of Trustees. They have yet to meet since he met with us. Their next meeting for the month is June 21st. Um, we came to the conclusion that probably the best approach for that outdoor classroom, if it could be a part of our playground plan after all, would be some kind of a collaborative effort with the trustees and perhaps the garden club as well. Um, it's, an, it's a classroom space that we had originally intended to serve all members of the community. It will be a quiet space. It will be available at playground time. It will be available during school time for um, teachers to bring classrooms out. And it certainly would be available at any other times for um, library programs or anyone else in the town to use. That um, is something that's been put a bit on the back burner now. It gives us some time to really look at that more thoroughly and really work collaboratively with the trustees and perhaps the garden club. But that's as far as that's gone at this point. So um, we were excited to have their initial enthusiasm, but they'll need to discuss it as a group at their meeting on the 21st and get back to us. We meet again as a playground committee on the 27th of June, so that'll give us an opportunity to regroup on that particular piece of the project. But for now, that piece of the project has been um, sort of put on a wish list. So that's, that's saving us a little money up front, too, on the Pond Cove Playground. Um, we also met with a professional fundraiser who assisted us in coming up with what we feel is a realistic fundraising plan for these proposals. It's a lot of money that still needs to be raised. Um, but we do feel that we have a pretty solid plan. You will notice that we have also scaled back the cost of all of our proposals, and we've reworked the projects into more affordable phases. If all goes according to plan, we could undertake phase one of the Pond Cove renovation and phase one of the new middle school playscape next summer, summer 2002. We've cut the overall cost of all three playground projects by approximately $120,000, which represents about a 20% savings off the initial cost of the proposals. So the new figure for all three projects is about $478,700. You are going to notice some number differences in the report that you have. I'm sorry. Um, things got pulled together very quickly at the last to get this in your hands in time. And we do have a new um, accurate page of numbers for you. The numbers towards the back of the report, in fact, where it's phased in, are accurate. But we have a, a front page for you that will make it a little more clear for you. And I'll hand that out to you in a few minutes. Um, so we're looking at um, Pond Cove being the largest and most complicated piece of all of the projects proposed to come in at $252,600. Two phases of the middle school construction, and that's going to be in three phases, Pond Cove. Two phases of middle school will cost about $116,000 in Fort Williams, which will be completed and proposed to be completed in one phase will be about $89,000. In addition to that, there's about $21,000 in fees and services, so that all finally adds up to $478,700. Now, the initial phases proposed for Pond Cove and the middle school do represent the largest portions of both of those projects. So once those are undertaken, there will be huge, significant improvements on both of those playgrounds. 
Pond Cove, as I said, is going to be compete, competed, completed in three phases. Middle school would be done in two phases, but after the first phase is complete, as far as most of the students are concerned, it will feel like a new playground. The additional phase to come later is paving benches, um, additional site work. So all of the playground equipment will be in place with phase one of the middle school renovation. At Pond Cove, phase one would involve removal of the upper structure, replacement with a large new multi-level structure, and all the necessary surfacing, expansion of the hard surface play area, um, all site preparations, earthwork, earthwork and drainage for that particular area of the playground, not for the entire playground. But it's, um, it's a proposal works, which works well in terms of cordoning off that section of the playground that children will still have the field and the lower playground structure to use while this one is um, under construction, although of course we're not going to be undertaking construction during the school year, only during the summer. But, so we'll have a new section here, we'll have the older section there, and as the phases continue over the next few years, the entire thing will be done. Um, just so you're aware, um, the cost reductions have come in a variety of forms, but the main reductions were, taken, were made by taking several pieces out of the project and sort of putting them on a uh, wish list for as funds become available. These items include most of the landscaping and the benches at all three sites, the shade structure and the outdoor classroom at Pond Cove, the retaining walls at the middle school, and replacing the rubberized surfacing that we had hoped for under the swings of the Fort Williams lot with um, sand or wood chips. The rubberized surfacing is state of the art, it is tremendously resilient, and it is tremendously expensive. So we have tried to use it only where we felt it was absolutely necessary, um, specifically underneath the play structures and the slides. And we are recommending use of wood chips or possibly sand. Sand is more appropriate for Fort Williams than it is for Pine Cove or Middle School. Under the swings and in any other areas where a soft fall surface is necessary. So we feel that is, that is um, more than adequate in terms of safety. The rubberized surfacing, um, as I said, is, is best under a hard fall surface, and that's what we're recommending. So our landscape architect, Pat Carroll, is here tonight, and he can speak to any specific questions you have about the design of the playgrounds. Um, Laura Briggs is also here with us this evening. Um, Laura is a city planner who has worked in Portland, Oregon, and Montgomery County, Maryland, but now, by the grace of God, resides in Cape Elizabeth, where she's raising her family, and she literally fell out of the sky into our hands. <laughs> she has been a very active and very invaluable member of our playground committee, and it has been especially um, helpful in pulling all the numbers together for us. So Laura can probably hands, handle most of your numbers um, questions better than I. Um, I also wanted to mention in regards to funding, we have met our first funding goal so far with the Pond Cove Challenge this past weekend. Um, an enormous number of parents, teachers, and students worked extremely hard to pull that off and they were able to um, meet the funding goal for that project of roughly $3,000. So, so far we're on target there, and we are very grateful to all the people who have worked so tirelessly on that project and many other projects at Pond Cove um, and the middle school to set some money aside over the years for the Pond Cove and the middle school playgrounds. Um, I think uh, members of the PCPA specifically have been working for probably three years now on setting aside funds for the playground. So they are to be um, commended, and we are very grateful for all of their efforts. Um, that is all. I have to say to you right now, but I can answer any questions unless you want to go over the specifics of the plan with Pat. First of all, I just want to thank you for that um, excellent report that recapped everything really well. I also want to thank Lisa, who's, who couldn't be here tonight, the chair, and the rest of the committee. This is a wonderful project for the community, and uh, I know we, we on the council have asked you some hard questions, but I, I think um, you've come up with some some answers, and uh, I just want to commend you for all the work you've done on it. I, I hope this all works out the way that it should, because it will be great for Cape Elizabeth. Mm. And now, fellow councillors, any questions, comments? Councillor McGinty. Um, when I left our last combined meeting, our last workshop we had, I, I left with the impression that, um, and maybe I'm wrong, that the committee wasn't interested, maybe that's not the way to put it, but. The committee felt they had done their job by doing this report. By the way, it is an excellent report. Um, but that the funding would be left to somebody else who came along, another group of people mm -hmm. or a building committee or something like that. Mm -hmm. am, I, am I wrong in that? I mean, no, you're not wrong. Um, 
I think we have come to the conclusion that um, really for this project to go forward, um, we need to continue to steer it, and many of us are anxious to do that and to be involved with the fundraising. We have already met as a committee, and um, we need to expand that committee. Um, but that's our plan now, is to go ahead with a solid core group of probably five or six members from our original committee to go on into the next phase of this. Okay, great, great. That's what I want to hear. Good. Including myself and including um, Chair Lisa Silverman Gent. So. Good. Good. Thank you. Other questions? Council Roberts? No, I was going to move. Uh, I'll wait for the sub question before I make the motion. I guess my question was where do we go from here with this now? I mean, it's a great report, it's a great plan, a great funding strategy. Um, obviously, at least some of the members of the committee want to stay involved. Do we need to create another committee to implement this? Do we need to commit a, create a building committee? I guess I'm at a loss on where we, the next step to take. Well, it, there are a number of avenues that we could indeed take, but one thing we could just do is um, receive the report uh, with thanks uh, and gratitude, and then um, in terms of moving forward, we could approve the master plan, if that's the wish of the council, um, and uh, authorize the use of, let me see what the manager's <laughs> writing here, authorize the use of the bond funds as proposed by the committee upon successful receipt of the funds for the first two phases, the phase one at the middle school and phase one at the Pond Cove school. I mean, that's, that's one idea, but we're certainly open to other ideas. Other thoughts? Councilor Roberts? Is it appropriate to make a motion at this time, perhaps, and move forward with the uh, with discussion from there? Get a motion on the table. Yeah, mm -hmm. All right. I'd move, then, for acceptance of the playground study report and approval for the work schedule as detailed uh, in the report. And w were, you, were you saying release of the funds that we had approved earlier upon the fundraising of the rest of it? Is, is that what you were suggesting? In, in, yeah. What, what I had just been talking about was to authorizing the use of the town's funds that were authorized by the bond um, as proposed in the committee's plan in this master report that we have before us once we have received um, the other funds for the first two phases. In other words, releasing the 137,000 more dollars, town dollars, once the necessary, I think it's another 53,000, approximately 53,000 uh, for those first two phases. Once those have been received from the other fundraising sources, or committed at least. Received or committed. Received or committed. Is that concept in your motion? I believe it is. If, if you believe it is and you made the motion, then it must, it <laughs> must be so. <laughs> <laughs> But I'm glad Councillor Fritz clarified that. I mean, I, I would feel most comfortable if it, if it were part of the motion, if, if you were willing. So release, you would be, feel comfortable in releasing the town funds contingent upon the town um, receiving the, the other funding sources, the other money receipt, necessary for yeah. the first phase. I, I think that someone, I think or, you, Madam Chairman, said receipt or commitment. In the, for example, the land and water conservation funds, those are likely to be committed uh, before they're actually, they're actually received yes. after the work is done. So, uh, in, you know, in some cases, in the terms of, with, as we did with the ball field, Little League, provided it's a bona fide organization, i.e., one of the parents' associations commits the funds, we don't wait to necessarily have to have those in hand provided, and it's a bona fide organization. That's worked out very well with the ball fields. You might have seen a letter in your packet. Uh, we just received a, a check uh, from Little League uh, for a pledge they made five years ago. Continuing to pay each year. You want me to rephrase that then? How about acceptance of the playground study report and approval of the schedule for work, providing the funding is, uh, and our commitment for funding is in place? What say you, Councillors? Any more discussion? Who, who said that? I I don't think anybody it needs, did. <laughs> it needs to be seconded. It needs to be seconded. I, if, if I may, I think the way that Councillor Roberts worded it provided the commitments per the funding plan are in place, because those commitments also include in-kind funding and some of those issues which should be easy to, to put in place as well. Uh, you know, it's, uh, I think that would be all-encompassing, the way you worded it. 
So there's a motion before us. Do I hear a second? Second. And moved and seconded further discussion. Now, Councilor McGinn. Just do we do we need to establish a new organization to do this, or can we just say, go ahead and do it? I mean, I don't know. I I thought I heard Lisa say that. I, I'm sorry, uh, Tina say that um, there your committee is willing to move. Yeah, I don't know if you'd be comfortable with us creating a subcommittee of the playground committee for fundraising. Um, we could do it that way. We would need some additional members. I don't know if you'd feel that those people would need to be appointed or it could be a little more um, casual than that. Was um, there, was there time it would be, I think it would be valuable. The mission of this current right. committee was such that it didn't go forward. Yeah. It talked about fundraising and the mission of the, Is it the current time? mission. So yeah, wh Why don't we, we look at that and get back to you? I know, you know, for example, Laura Briggs was mentioned as someone who's been a tremendous contributor to the committee, although technically isn't appointed to the committee. And, you know, maybe they have some suggestions of other folks to bring forward and they could have a discussion and come back to the council on that particular issue. You know, this authorization still, you know, anything that the council authorizes involving finances or projects, there are still the administrative procedures and mm -hmm. those other controls and responsibilities that fall within the project. So, you know, in my sense is with this group and how well they've handled things, uh, there wouldn't be issues, but we still do have uh, the purchasing procedure and some of those things to deal with. So basically what we're talking about is approving the, the master plan concept as outlined in this document before us, but then um, making the release of the town's $137,000, the bond funds, contingent upon the committee uh, rece receiving or having commitment for, having received commitment for the other $53,000 that are necessary for the um, phase one of Pond Cove and phase one of the middle school. Okay. I have one question, Absolutely. and that is, um, would these projects be severable, uh, for instance, if the funding and commitments is in place for Pond Cove phase one, but not necessarily for middle school phase one, does the motion contemplate the release of the monies necessary to finish one project, which is severable from another. They brought forward that they would uh, purchase the equipment for both sites, so I'm assuming that that would be part of their of the so, phase So you're one. saying? Using that 150 down to 137. They have to use that by the end of the of coming year, or they, they don't get to use it at all. So. And I, th I think the council was very clear, and the committee recognized that, that it was to work with, it had to be worked into the two playgrounds. Um, I don't see them severing that out. Do you, Tina? No, but certainly we'd want to have the flexibility in there um, so that if, in a worst case, we were short $1,000 or, or whatever in our fundraising, we could still go ahead with these projects, but um, use our own good judgment in scaling back the projects a bit so that we wouldn't want to be locked into, you know, raising exactly that amount before we could receive any of the fund, use any of the funds. I think we might want to be a little careful about that. <coughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So you would want them severable to use Councillor Lynch's phrase? Well, we feel we got a very clear message from the town council that that $150,000 needs to be spent as equally as possible on both of those playgrounds. And, and that's our belief as well, and that's our intent. So. Um, we hadn't thought about separating them out, but I think um, Ms. Lynch raises an important point. I think we just need to have some flexibility in there. Um, and as I said, if um, you know, we don't meet all of our fundraising goals, obviously we'll have to scale the project back to some degree. And certainly, you know, this is a dynamic process, and we would continue to stay in touch with you on it. But, um, so is what you're saying that you would, any fundraising shortfalls that could pen potentially occur, you would address by reducing the scope of the project, but still focusing on both mm -hmm. the Pond mm -hmm. Cove and the middle school at the same time. So you mm -hmm. would just reduce the scope at both of those so that the, the town's money would still be going towards both projects. Mm -hmm. That would be our intent, yes. Because that, that's what, what I heard the council at the workshop saying, that they wanted both those projects focused on, rather than if there's a short come to throw all the money towards one or the other. 
Councillor Roberts. I'd just like to make some comments, I guess, about the committee. We haven't really done that, but the time and the effort that the, this group has put in has been, I don't think I've worked with any group in town that's put more time into it, more energy into it, and perhaps more frustration over a period of time, too. <laughs> and, they, and they do need to be commended. Um, they've really done a great job. It's, uh, plus the staff, uh, people that were involved in all those committee meetings, when uh, Councillor uh, Carson appointed me to, to sit in with that group, she said it would be you know, just a few meetings. <clears throat> I think we're perhaps at 100 meetings later, but th th that's all right. <laughs> and I would also like to comment and that a lot, the scope of what they are suggesting, it really does need uh, in these phases to be done. When the playgrounds were originally cited, there was little or no thought given into where they were placing these things. One of them is on, just on a plain ledge outcropping. Um, and when the council voted for the money originally, I think we had the idea that we could just um, step in, put the playscapes back on the rock, and that would be fine. Well, as they got into it, they re realized that they couldn't do that. And the playgrounds really, and somebody else stated it, and I guess I'll just paraphrase them, the playgrounds have been the stepchild. Um, the, the town really hasn't put much attention to the playgrounds. The school has not budgeted or done anything for the playgrounds either. Um, and when you look at where these, again, where they're cited, a lot more work than just plunking down equipment needs to be done. And they've addressed that. Um, and the majority of the money will go for the playscape um, equipment. Uh, and the fundraising will have to address those other issues later. So I guess just a plea to the audience out there, if there's some benevolent benefactor that would like to see great <laughs> playscapes for the children of Cape Elizabeth, we're more than willing to have you step forward and help us out. So, <laughs> But again, thank you to the committee. They really have done a great job. Right. Thank you, Councillor Roberts. Is there any more discussion before we move the question? Seeing none, there's a motion on the table. Does anybody want it read back? No? OK. All those in favor? Oh, yes. Sorry. Opposed? None. It's passed 7 0. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Laura has just passed out to you the um, correct set of numbers to make things a little clearer for you. I'd also like to mention to you that, um, as you know, we were trying so hard to get something done on those playgrounds this summer. Um, that is not feasible now, but we see no reason why we couldn't do some minor adjustments this summer, such as putting swings on the middle school playground. There haven't been swings there for several years now. The swings would be placed in the position where they're originally going to be placed, the site work and everything could be done at once. There's no additional cost there. That would be an, a big upgrade for that playground, and it wouldn't incur any additional cost. Um, I don't think any kind of a um, complicated bid process would be necessary. We're just talking about um, a couple of sets of swings. So that's something that we're looking forward to doing. Um, we have not, as a committee, formally taken a vote on that yet, but um, that is an opportunity to use some of the funds that we already have to go ahead and make a minor improvement out there. We're also looking at um, what could we possibly do at Pond Cove this summer um, if we have to wait until next summer to do any major renovations out there. And the committee is looking at the possibility of one or two possible standalone pieces of equipment, such as a climbing wall or a climbing dome, or um, they have swings out there, thankfully. Um, the problem with Pond Cove is that anything that you place out there, just about anywhere, um, would have to be moved with the renovation. So we need to really look at the details of the pieces that we're considering and look at whether the expense would be more than would be worth it to install something, even though it's small, you've got to put some concrete footings in and move it again once the entire renovation is done. So again, that's something that we need to be looking at at our next meeting. And, um, I hope you um, will trust us to be conservative and careful in our judgment on that, but we do feel strongly that um, those, those playgrounds are falling apart um, in terms of pieces being removed almost day by day. Um, I think something broke again just the other day on the middle school playground after Ernie had already been out there just a week and a half ago removing another piece. Um, so that is our hope, but we need to obviously be careful about that and, um, and not spend money that's just going to have to be respent later. So that's where we're at. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it and your support. Okay. All right. Item number 14. 
Receipt of the report of the Planning Board on a proposed amendment to the zoning ordinance regarding conditional uses in the BA district zone. Yes, Madam Chairman. Uh, David Griffin, the Chairman of the Planning Board, is here this, this evening, as well as Maureen O'Meara, the Town Planner, should you have any questions. I'll give a brief background. This resulted from a petition received about six months ago from residents throughout the town, but primarily residents who were concerned about the uh, possible conversion of the Irving Station at the corner of Preble Street and Shore Road. Uh, the Planning Board, this, the Council referred this issue to the Planning Board, and uh, the Planning Board looked at it, had a public hearing, and uh, essentially what the proposal was, and this is in very abbreviated form, is that you could have the primary use in a business zone, but you can't have a secondary use in addition to that primary use. That, that was the, the gist of the original proposal. And that caused some concerns uh, elsewhere in the business zone, for example, down around Jordan's Farm Market in that area, uh, which is also in part of the BA zone. Anyway, the Planning Board looked at this, took comments, considered it, and recommended unanimously that uh, it ought not to be adopted by the Town Council. Meanwhile, the genesis of what had created it uh, seemed to have disappeared for a while, at least cooled off. Uh, in terms of that particular proposal, uh, so it you know does not appear to be uh, as ripe as it was when the petition first came in. As I said, the chairman of the planning board is here to amplify that further if he desires, as well as uh, the town planner. They they look like they're having a very friendly conversation <laughs> in the in the, uh, <laughs> the back row of the council chamber. <laughs> is there anything either one of you wishes to say? <laughs> Somebody going to play music here tonight? <laughs> yeah. I'm Dave Griffin, Chairman of the Planning Board Committee, and briefly, all I would like to say is that we held a hearing. We heard uh, quite a few bits of information. Um, basically <clears throat> for the proposal and we heard from several of the owners of property and business in the BA zone which were definitely against it and felt that the restrictions were too much for them. Uh, after we looked at the ordinance that's in place now I think the board's consensus was basically that we had enough in the ordinance to control uh, changes and that uh, changing that ordinance wasn't necessary. That's basically the gist of it. Right. Any other questions? Thank you, Mr. Griffin. No questions or anything? I'll let you. Question? Uh, uh, no, there has been one suggestion that uh, this should be tabled indefinitely. Why don't we just deny it? I mean, why don't we just not uh, approve the... Uh, Amendment to the zoning ordinance. Keep the zoning ordinance the way it is. We've just gone through a big fight about zoning. <laughs> uh, I guess you're for a motion. I don't have any problem tabling it. I, I don't. Well, it can be brought back. Yeah. If if yes. the the reason that it was um, proposed in the first place, if that issue comes back, then it might be valuable to be have it tabled rather than dismissed. To be able to revive it. Right. Yep. Council McGinty. I had, I, I talked just briefly with, with, with uh, Councilor Roberts and, and Councilor Berry before the meeting. Um, more of a process question. I mean, yes. can we, I mean, I'm not opposed to tabling this. I mean, I don't, you know, but should it maybe be sent to the Ordinance Committee for, I mean, because the, the Planning Board's offering a recommendation. That's all they're offering is a is their insight, their recommendation. Mm -hmm. Their recommendation is we don't approve it. Okay, now should we take that information and send it to maybe the Ordinance Committee and see what comes out of the Ordinance Committee, if any? And the Ordinance Committee come back and say, we agree with the Planning Board that we, or, I mean, it just seems to me that the, the process is just dying by, by tabling it, the process dies. Does the manager have? Any no, I, I think I think Councilor McKinty is correct. If the council 
wants to have an opportunity to discuss it further and, and deliberate its merits, it would be appropriate to uh, refer to the ordinance committee. That's why the, the, the suggestion said after an opportunity for discussion, it was recommended to be tabled indefinitely because it, it, that the thinking when that was prepared was that Councillor McGinty or someone else might make that suggestion, and if the council wishes to do that, that's fine. I think the planning board's uh, position has been made uh, clear, and I think they've thought it through well, and I think that we should not uh, change the zoning ordinance. So you, you would be in favor of just denying it yes. rather than tabling it yes. indefinitely? You can always read that. If we sent it to the ordinance committee, would we be able to discuss other concepts or just this proposal as it is and up or down? The ordinance committee can discuss whatever it chooses to discuss. Yeah. Oh, sure. Then, yeah, I would, I would think we could send it to the ordinance committee for, to see whether maybe there are some other ways that we might deal with the issue. Councilor Roberts. Apparently, there really is no issue at the present time, and I'm not sure that the Ordinance Committee wants to get bogged down in something that's not that important. We've got a 7-0 vote from the uh, Planning Board. I don't have any problem referring it to the committee, but then just let it die there, I guess, rather than having you <laughs> or, or just playing table it indefinitely. But why do we want to waste an awful lot more of man hours on something that's pretty much doesn't need to be, no further action needs to be done on it other than just... Uh, that was my thinking. As a, member, Lynch. as a member of the Ordinance Committee, I'd like to just kill this tonight, <laughs> whether we do it through indefinite postponement or by outright denial, I, I'm somewhat indifferent to, but I don't see a lot of reason to send it to the Ordinance Committee. And just a process question, uh, the Ordinance Committee could take up this kind of issue on its own motion sure. anyway at some yes. point in the future oh. without having this hanging uh, going around. Yes. So, okay, thank you. Any other? Is there a motion? There's no motion on the floor yet, is no. there? No. Does anybody want to make a motion? No. I'll make a motion. <laughs> <laughs> Councilor motion Barry. that we uh, do not uh, take any action and that the matter be dismissed. That we do so not change the zoning ordinance. Okay. Second. Do I hear? I'm sorry. Second. second. Okay. Any discussion? Okay. All those in favor? <laughs> Opposed? Six one. Okay. okay. Then it's killed. Um, item. Number 15, action to consider the approval of a revised fiscal year 2001 appropriation for the Department of Public Works. Would you like to speak about this, Mr. McGovern? Yes, Madam Chairman. Over the years, the Public Works Department has been very good to the town and has given us a hun hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars in unspent monies at, on June 30. Uh, fiscal year 2001 is not going to be one of those years. Uh, <laughs> as a result of the... Uh, the extended winter, the number of storms, the, the fact that they occurred over the weekend, uh, it was just so much overtime incurred, uh, mm -hmm. as well as fuel costs going up, the diesel fuel for the trucks, uh, gasoline for a few of the trucks, uh, as, as well as the heating of the, the new garage was higher than had been estimated, electricity was higher than estimated, uh, all of those things uh, could result in as much as 50000 above the amount that had been originally appropriated. Uh, we have, uh, there's, there's also, I should mention, uh, I got a question about from a counselor today, the storm drain clean, storm drain <laughs> cleaning uh, bid had been out for three years and it had in fact expired and the company was still doing it and it was, it was based on a certain number of catch basins and we've added a lot of catch basins with developments over the years and that add, that's about $3,000 of the problem as well. And that's been addressed in next year's budget. We've also addressed, uh, through the good work of Eric Olson of Public Works, we've found ways to reduce the heating consumption uh, at the Public Works garage, and we've also turned out that forest of lights uh, that Councillor Roberts used to be able to see in back of his house when the garage first opened. We've considerably cut down the outside lighting. So we've been looking at uh, reducing the cost, and I uh, feel confident that with, with a reasonable winter, uh, this coming year, we, we, we won't have a recurrence of this problem. So I would uh, 
encourage the Council to revise the appropriation. Where do the funds come from from this? Where do they come from from other items? Uh, coming up in the agenda, I'll answer the question all at the same time. Uh, they come primarily from uh, savings in other accounts, other departments throughout the budget as you look at the monthly budget reports. Uh, things, uh, there's always unexpended amounts in, in almost every other department. Engine one's uh, uh, a little bit tight, that, that particular account this year. Uh, it also comes from, in, in particularly one of the later items, from that ubiquitous surplus. Uh, and the good news is, is that my revenue estimates in March, uh, looking at the previous four or five months where we saw a downward trend, reversed dramatically in April, uh, reversed as well in May. So while we had been projecting uh, 10 to 15 percent decreases uh, in April, May, and June in some of our major revenues, for example, excise tax in April actually came in 19 percent above the year before and made up for the March difference. So it was not only uh, it wasn't a drop of 19 percent, it was an increase of 19. So I mean, I'm speaking more in terms of a later item on the agenda uh, than this one, but uh, yeah, we've gone through a t probably the toughest financial year uh, in, in our history uh, because of so many projects going on and not a whole lot of room to move. I feel confident that we'll get through this and uh, I think it's important that, that, that the Council take this action as well as uh, on the later item, which I'll address briefly in terms of the project itself. Thank you. Do I hear a motion? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'd move. There'll be a that, couple of these. <laughs> <laughs> a reluctant motion. I will move to revise the FY 2001 appropriation to Department of Public Works by how much? Fifty thousand dollars. By fifty thousand dollars. Second. Discussion. I don't uh, think I mentioned public. That is offset. Did I? Yes, I was going I, to. Yeah. Go ahead. Well, I was just going to match, even though the. The appropriation is $50,000. The net impact is 30000 because of the good work of someone to get a grant from FEMA for the snowstorms. So it's still not great news, but it's 30000 net impact, not 50000 The good work is Bob Malley working with George Flaherty at County uh, EMA. Several communities actually got money through George this year. and. Uh, helped them out considerably. Uh, it was kind of a, a windfall that I think a lot of the towns didn't expect to get either. So that was nice. Any so further? What's the, what's the amount? Uh, 50, the, the appropriation would have to be 50000 50. But the financial impact is 30000 because on another line we've gotten an additional 20000 in revenue. But this has no effect on the tax rate, though. No. No, the tax rate is... What, it, what the tax rate is. Yeah, I mean, I, I, some people might want to know that. No, that's a good point to bring up. Thank you, Council. Any further questions? Discussion? No? Okay. The motion. The motion. <laughs> the motion is before us. Um, all those in favor? Against? None. It's unanimous. Okay, thank you. Um, Item number 16, action to consider the proposed final enactment of the state school subsidy. Uh, there was nothing attached to this particular item. Um, Mr. McGovern, would you like to speak about it or I can just no, read? Please. I can just read what it is. The Maine legislature approved a state school subsidy to the town of Cape Elizabeth in the amount of $2,493,757. At the time the fiscal year 2002 general fund budget was adopted last month, the amount we believed we would be receiving was $2,440,989 for, for a difference of $52,768. The town manager recommends the 52,768 be placed in a reserve fund for support of the fiscal year 2003, in other words, the next year's school budget. Uh, this year, as the result of the Maine legislature, we had an expected $436,480 loss in state school subsidy, reduced to a loss of only $41,358. 
However, we have a grim outlook for the Maine Legislature to continue to provide this sort of cushion to the extent that it enabled this additional $395,122. Madam Chairman. Yes, I, Councilman <coughs> Carson. I move that we approve the state new stu state school subsidy to the town of Cape Elizabeth in the amount of $2,493,757 and that uh, I additionally move that the, we, we follow the recommendation and put the additional $52,768 in a reserve fund for support of the fiscal year 2003 school budget. Second. second. And moved and seconded. Councilor McGinty. Um, two questions, or one statement and then a question statement. I would prefer that we use this money to reduce the current tax rate for this fiscal year, um, as we have done in the past. This year we didn't put a statement in our budget, but we have previously put statements that if we received any additional money that would be used to reduce the tax rate. I would prefer to do that. Um, the second thing, are we in danger, if we just take this money and throw it in a reserve fund, are we in any danger of the, the state looking at us and saying, we gave you extra money, you didn't even use it, you put it in a reserve fund? I'm sorry, Manager McGovern. Yeah, I, I was concerned about that latter. I was concerned about the first point because I knew that question would come up. I was also concerned about the latter point. I did specifically address this issue with uh, the legislator who I think worked the hardest to get this extra money for Cape Elizabeth, and that was uh, Representative Janet McLaughlin, uh, along with, with Senator Bromley and uh, you know legislators from throughout the state. Uh, Representative Bliss, the she she thinks this is I, I don't mean to quote her, but I will. She thinks this is good, prudent action in terms of the grim outlook for the next year. Uh, every year, the the cushion issue becomes greater and greater in terms of the size of the cushion, uh, the, the the spread between the subsidy and, and the cushion amount. Next year, we're estimating approximately the issue instead of 436 will be $600,000 without legislative action. Uh, the legislature is currently working on the Part 2 budget. I wasn't home to see the news this evening, see if there's any news on it. But, you know, the, the, they need to raise taxes at the state level in order to provide additional funds now for the Part 2 budget. You know, some of them are in the areas that many of us would not object to, cigarettes. For, for instance, I keep that editorial comment to myself, but should have probably. But uh, nonetheless, uh, you know, looking at the school funding list, looking at the last legislative bullet in the Maine Municipal Association, where they trash the fact that these cushions occur, uh, be a challenge for Councillor uh, Lynch when she goes to Augusta to the LPC. Uh, you know, I just think it, it's very prudent uh, fiscal management to recognize that fiscal year 2003 is going to be an extremely difficult year uh, for the school department. And, uh, uh, you know, the, the, you could, yes, you know, legally you can't reduce the tax rate now because the budget has to be set by, by May 30. But yet, at, at the same time, if that was the desire of the council, you know, even though you adopted the budget, the charter requires it to be adopted by March 30th, uh, it's the assessor who sets the tax rate. And if the council, you know, gave a consensus, you can't instruct the assessor under the law to set the tax rate. But if you, you know, if you refuse to put this in a reserve fund, we would get that message that that's what you wanted to have happen. So it, w it would be an impact of about six cents uh, in the tax rate. Instead of an increase of $1.70, there'd be an increase of $1.64. I, I still think it's in, in the school department's best financial interest, and particularly the taxpayer's interest, uh, that we look ahead to the obvious uh, difficulty we're going to be facing this coming year. I just, I just still have a, a concern that we get this money for education and we don't spend it. And, you know, I, mean, I, I understand everything you said, and I don't disagree with anything you said, except, you know, I'd rather use the money now than and then deal with the problem for the 2003 budget when we deal with it a year from now. Yeah. It goes back to the principle, John, that you, you approve the subsidy, which you are doing as part of this motion. But secondly, you approve the overall appropriation for the school department. 
you're not changing under this proposed motion the appropriation for the school department. You're putting these into reserve fund, but they would still they still need to be appropriated for schools. Uh, in other words, they're limited yeah. to the appropriation that so, we voted on, yeah. so they can't spend this. So you have done the two things the State Department of Education will be looking for. You've accepted the subsidy, and you've also appropriated that full subsidy plus the entire required local option. As I forget the exact wording in the, in the, the motion that you passed last month. You're doing all of that that the required and, and then some. I, I believe the difference in the situation, too, because I asked about this, was that the timing this year was such that in previous years when the council had inserted language about reducing the amount, that was when we were still finding out the school subsidy amount before the, the whole budget as a whole was approved by May 30th. It was, it was when you were setting the public hearing for the final budget and not when you were adopting the final budget. That was the difference. So the it, it ran later this year, and that's why we sort of got hung up with the dates. I'm sorry, I thought I saw a hand over here. No. Uh, up line up anyway. <laughs> I tend to agree with the, the town manager in that we want to keep everything as level as possible, and next year is going to be bad news from everything I'm seeing both here and where I work. And if this, the 50 to $4,000 could be just a mere pittance, but anything we can get, we need to put that a cushion at the to keep out a huge spike next year. We, that's when you hear from the taxpayers, when you get the huge spikes. Any other comments? That, that's Council. the advantage, I think, in, in leveling. doing it, is keeping it a little more level. Um, but I, it, it's disturbing that we're constantly going down in our subsidy rather than, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, you know, I mean, we've just lucked out in the last couple of years, and this is the first year we've actually seen a reduction in what it ought to be, but. Yes, um, I, I think we're all disturbed. The formula is extremely prejudiced to Cape Elizabeth, or yeah. against Cape Elizabeth, and that's a lot, a of, lot of unfairness there. A lot of Southern Maine communities, we're not alone down here. I guess fortunately. <laughs> well, unfortunately, we're not in, in the majority, so so no. far it's going to be a tough battle next year, but, but we'll see. We'll I'd see. like to move the question. Yes. Thank you. All those in favor? Seven. Unanimous. Thank you. Um, item number 17. Action on proposed lease renewal of building number 326 at Fort Williams Park to Drug Rehabilitation Incorporated. In other words, that's day one. Um, the five-year lease provides for a monthly lease of $2,520 indexed to the annual adjustment to the lo local property <coughs> tax rate. And the base amount in the first year represents a 20% increase from the final year of the expiring lease. The lessee will continue to absorb utility costs and so on. Is there anything you wish to add? No. Um, I'll entertain a motion. I, I, I move that we <clears throat> renew the lease <clears throat> at the building 326 at Fort Williams Park to the drug rehabilitation, uh, otherwise known as day one, on the basis of which the manager has presented to us. So here's second. Second. It's been moved and second. Councillor Barry. Uh, I have a couple of questions about this. Uh, in the second paragraph, uh, it just says T-O-O. -O. I think it's a, just a typo. It says what? To have and to hold instead of T-O-O. -O. Uh, oh. Then in uh, paragraph four, uh, oh, the, the oh. third uh, line down, it says as to whether it desire to, resident, uh, to <laughs> rent the premises. I think it should be desires with an S on it. Then it says, if lessee desires renewal and lessor desires to rent the premises, this agreement of lease shall be, shall be extended for an additional, should be AL, five years. So we're not talking about five years, we're talking about 10 years. And I don't like to see the council, I understand there has to be agreement here, but I don't see the, like to see the council tied up for a 10 year period on this uh, with, with a five year renewal. I think it should be renegotiated because as we just pointed out, that uh, we're going 20% above the final year of the previous lease. And I think we should take a fresh look at it after five years and not uh, 
if, if we uh, get uh, an agreement, then uh, uh, the, the lease can be extended for another five years for a total of 10 years. I, I just don't think we ought to tie up the town that long you, because you, of the uncertainty of the, uh, uh, the future. And look what's happened in the last 10 years. But in five years, what do you want to change it to, Henry, so that at the end of the five-year term, it we is. will renegotiate completely rather than, than automatically renew it? That's right. But that the, that the fees will be, st the continual be, will be indexed by the tax rate? We, uh, sure. Well, they're, they're welcome to re renegotiate a new lease, but I don't like to see the town tied up. I, I, I think I, the manager would like to I don't to think suggest. this is an issue with day one, so no. I would suggest we just cross out that final sentence. Yeah. Would you so like just make it for five years. So you'll amend your motion? It needs to be amended. And, yeah. And, is and, and your motion is amended? Yeah, I'll amend the motion to five years. I will support that motion. Okay. As Any further discussion? You want to change the T-O to O. And, and the spelling error the two the that you mentioned error. will be. Yes. Spell check to pick that one up. There's more discussion here. <laughs> Just a question for you. Councilor Roberts. How long has day one been there now? Do you know? Oh, five years. 15 years, maybe. Have they, then they've been a good tenant. Mm -hmm. Yes, they have. Well, uh, no question about their being a good tenant. I just, just wanted for the record. The lease. Yeah, but it, you know, I think Councilor Berry points out it's just not in the town's best interest to have that sentence there. So well, I, I agree. With we, we have the ability to remove it. So I think okay. he's made a good suggestion. Okay. I move the question. All those in favor? Seven. It's unanimous. Item number 18, action on bids for the Broad Cove Road reconstruction project. Manager McGovern. I tried to prime you for this one a little Part bit earlier. Two of the discussion. Uh, you all remember winter time. I, I, I know, you know, for, I look, I'm looking over at Councilor McGinty, he was probably on the present council on Broad Cove Road as much as anyone during the spring when the frost heap season occurred. Uh, Broad Cove Road this past winter was a total mess. Mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, it definitely needs reconstruction when it was built now uh, 35, 40 years ago. Uh, it, it didn't have the proper uh, drains under the road. We've had a couple of meetings. We developed plans. Uh, it really uh, was sad when we opened the bids uh, about a week ago and saw uh, that we had a problem that amounted to uh, $214,000 uh, with a project that we really needed to do. And uh, we only have $415,000 available. Uh, I asked Bob Malley, uh, Director of Public Works, and our engineer, Steve Harding, to meet with the low bidder to see if they could do some value engineering. Uh, they came back and uh, I like that expression. Yes, value <laughs> engineering. Uh, we can change two aspects of the project uh, and save $90,564. Uh, that said, I, I do recommend that the bid be awarded to Dearborn Construction for 472967 that we have a contingency of approximately 7%, and that we continue to fund construction and administration inspection uh, for a little over 28,000 drainage easements, legal engineering for 4,000, for a total budget of 539,000. And that 415,000 of this come from previously appropriated funds in the current year budget and the next year budget, and the balance of 124,000 is recommended to be appropriated from the undesignated fund balance. Uh, I deeply, deeply regret to do this, uh, regret this recommendation. Uh, however, uh, the road needs to be done. I think if we're going to do it, we ought to do it right. Uh, you know, we looked at, you know, discontinuing, not doing uh, a certain section of it. And that, you know, this is the only paved road in and out of that neighborhood. And uh, a lot of houses in there. And <coughs> it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense to, to do it once and then do it again. In fact, you know, the, the sewer really bothered me. Uh, to cut that out. Uh, and, you know, it, at one point I was, very close to recommending that we do that, but we do <coughs> out of the sewer fund. Uh, you know, I, I still think, you know, that $65,000, that's the sewer portion, should be done. Uh, however, we do have 
And the only thing that stopped me is that we do have enough money in the sewer fund right now, but we have some uh, stormwater sewer separation work that needs to be done over in Mountain View Park area that is going to consume some dollars up, uh, particularly on Mountain View Road, and that's being looked at now. Uh, so, you know, this saddens me. So, uh, when, you, when you say do it, but do it right, you're still talking about... Still not doing the sewer. The, the limited scope and the, yeah. the reducing the thickness, thickness That's right. of the pavement. Yeah. Councilor McGinty. Is, is there any way we could, maybe we could split the difference between the sewer fund and the undesignated we could. fund to, to do that? Because I, I also was sad and I'd like to see that sewer project. I, yeah, because you know, I know eventually the end by the sea is going to want sewer, although we're not making, we wouldn't be making that policy decision now. Uh, <laughs> and that whole area of, of Pond View, uh, Wentworth, you know, we're not proposing to put sewer there, but it just makes sense to get it up to that intersection so that when it happens, it's there. So I think that's an excellent recommendation, Councilor McGinty. Uh, and so what, how much would that put back in the budget? That would be $65,000 and uh, let me just double check the exact. So, th so then you'd take 65704. You'd take that additional 65704 from undesignated surplus? Uh, half of it from undesignated oh, yeah. surplus and half from the sewer fund. Half from the sewer fund, you said, half from an undesignated. <laughs> mm. I'm sorry, Councilor Roberts. Mm. It's curious. I had asked that we do follow road uh, right and not do it, uh, put all that money into it, and there was no money available at that time to make it a full. 24 feet wide rather than 22 feet wide, and now we're finding money for Broad Cove Road. Um, I guess I'd like to know how we could find it now. We couldn't find it back then when I asked earlier. Would like me to answer that question? Yeah. <laughs> the difference on Fowler Road was that uh, there, were, there were issues involving the right-of-way during some of the most crucial section between uh, Route 77 on this end of Fowler Road and uh, Jewett Road, we simply don't have the right-of-way in that area to extend the road. Uh, we also were faced with the issue of doing a total reconstruction was the difference of the amount that was funded, the 640000 uh, versus an amount that was approximately $2.5 million. Uh, it just, you know, it would have involved about two, two extra million of local funds, whereas this one involves 10% uh, of that, roughly. Uh, that was the difference between Fowler and this one. And, you know, I think the other thing is, for the most part, you know, Fowler, you know, we are doing in a very adequate way. We expect it's going to be a good road, uh, and it's, it's going to, to serve well and be long-lasting. Uh, if I could add, I think that Fowler Road's in far better condition today than Broadco Road is, obviously. I mean, and... Um, so I agree with what the manager said. I mean, upgrading Fowler Road is good for that, um, you know, for that neighborhood, that road. And, uh, but, you know, I looked at this, and I'm totally opposed to taking the money out of the, the undesignated surplus for this, but I don't see another way to do it. Did you have a comment, Carl? Well, I um, refreshed my memory if we have another project that we intended to do that we might put off until next year, and I, I wouldn't suggest the Mountain View area because I think that's a, an issue that really needs to be dealt with, but... Yeah. Mountain View, we, we're just doing a preliminary sense now of what we need to do there. That still needs, uh, it wasn't going to be done during this construction season anyway. We don't have a cost estimate yet. We, it's very, very preliminary. We're just trying to figure out what the problems are and coming up with some possible solutions to them. So we don't have another project to put off until no, the year to do this no, right, because be I, don't, I don't like the idea of not doing it right while we're doing it. No, I, Mountain View Park, we will do with, within due course when we anticipate it to do it. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? No, I'll just make a motion. Trying to move this along here. Uh, I move that we authorize the budget for the Broad Cove con reconstruction project in the amount of $539,000, 
of $415,000 in previously appropriated funds, and the balance of $124,000 is hereby appropriated from the undesignated fund surplus. I further move that we, uh, re we put back into this project the sewer, the sanitary sewer extension part of the project in the amount of $65,704, half of which shall be funded from the sewer fund and half of which shall be funded from the undesignated surplus. Second. And I, oh, and, and the, to continue the motion, and that the, that the manager be authorized to let the bid to the Dearborn Construction Company. Oh, that's part of it. Now do I hear a second. second for the rest of that? Yes. I'm doing my best. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion? All those, I seeing none, all those in favor? I think it's seven. I'm sorry, John. Yeah. Um, seven. Seven zero. Motion passes 7 0. Thank you. And last but not least, item number 19 action to agree to accept a proposed deed rider in order to implement the affordable housing provisions for the Whaleback Ridge subdivision. This is, we talked about this last month at our regular meeting, but this is a revised agreement. We're looking at approving the form. Do I hear a motion? Councilor, <laughs> <That was, laughs> you look so sad. I was again. I was telling Henry earlier that after I read this thing, my head was my head was spinning around. So, I might write Mary Ann's uh, Ballywig, I guess maybe. I was but, spinning too. Yes. Chairman Swisher, I move that we accept the proposed <laughs> deed rider in order to implement the affordable housing pro uh, provision set for the Whalebrook Ridge subdivision. Do I hear a second? Second. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Any discussion? We're just relying on the town attorney, right? That's correct. <laughs> Any further discussion? I, I have just one suggestion because since this is potentially running with the land and, and um, will be enforceable for a long, long time, I noticed that the eligible purchaser provisions at the top of page two are as published by the State Planning Office or the Greater Portland Council of Governments. And this, I'm reading at the very top of this, and to the extent that both of those agencies may change in the future, I would suggest that uh, some additional language be added by the attorneys, but something to the effect that um, or some other state or regional agency which publishes such data. Fine. We'll take care of that. Works for me. <laughs> I'm the motioner, right? Works for me. Does it work for the seconder? It works for the seconder. <laughs> okay. Does it work for everybody? All those in favor? Seven. It's, an, it's unanimous. Thank you very much. I think that's it, other than a motion to adjourn. We're I going to be following the town council meeting um, with a meeting of the board of the Thomas Jordan Trust and the museum at Portland Headlight to conduct our annual election of officers. And the boards, I'm mentioning this because it's the members of the town council. Council McGinty. I would just note that the uh, citizens' discussions of items not on the agenda portion before we adjourn is not on our agenda. Oh. Thank you. I don't think it's an issue but tonight. <laughs> I'd like to ask a question on that. Why do we have it at the beginning of the meeting and at the end of the meeting? In case somebody comes up with an idea that they couldn't remember in the beginning. The council rules for many, many years provided that it was only at the end of the meeting. The council amended the council rules about uh, 18, 19 years ago, perhaps, providing that the citizens should also have an opportunity at the beginning of the meeting so they wouldn't have so to uh, <laughs> wait around, around. through uh, all the council <laughs> deliberations. I move for adjournment. I second it. All in favor? Seven's here. We are adjourned. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>